This video was sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. It's a service where you have instantaneous access to lectures by top professors. One of these lectures inspired the creation of this video, so stay tuned till the end to find out more. The greatest inspiration to inventors, to creators, to scientists, is often based in fiction. Classic works by authors like H.G. Wells and Jules Verne set a generation of minds upon the path of scientific discovery. Those inspired by these works went on to inspire others themselves. This cycle has affected mankind in grand ways, and humanity's most outlandish achievements, the Apollo program, Sputnik, and the entire space race are no exception. So, we'll start here. Not with the Nazis, not with Galileo, but with a book, From the Earth to the Moon by Jules Verne. In the story, weapon crafters from Baltimore decide to make their largest creation yet, a cannon that sends them to the moon. As crazy as this sounds, the novel contains detailed scientific insight and propositions. By the end of the story, the cannon, which measures 900 feet long, fires three men into space, never to be heard from again. Today, it seems downright insane. How could anybody believe this would be feasible? Well, this story is from 1865, over a hundred years before Apollo 11, and well before the first airplanes. It gave hope to aspiring scientists that maybe someday, man could reach the moon. One man inspired by this was Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, a Russian scientist. In 1903, he published Exploration of Outer Space by Means of Rocket Devices. Using a rocket equation he created earlier, Tsiolkovsky showed the speed and fuel required to get a rocket into space. At the same time, his concept for a rocket would split into several parts, allowing different parts to hold fuel and passengers. At first, response was dismissive, but he was not deterred. He added on to his ideas in further detail, including how much energy was needed to conquer gravity. Over time, he gained recognition, and his ideas were taken far more seriously. By the 1920s, he explained potential systems to protect against re-entry and the composition of rocket fuel. However, he himself saw his ideas as ahead of its time, and never took his concepts into practice. Instead, it was Robert H. Garnard who took things further. An American, he was fascinated by the H.G. Wells story, The War of the Worlds. He only grew more entranced by space and studied physics throughout college. Writing papers detailing his ideas and theories, he soon fell upon his most important contribution to space travel, liquid-fueled rockets. While Solkowski described rockets in a similar fashion, Goner took the science and created the first liquid-fueled rocket in 1926. He continued his work, improving the rockets over decades. This would be the man and the ideas that would be the most influential to landing a man on the moon. Over in Germany, Hermann Ober and his student Werner von Braun were testing similar ideas to Gonard. Based on his experiments, they too saw great potential in liquid-fueled rockets, but soon their work became transformed into weapons of war. In the 1930s, Germany had a culture of rocket enthusiasts trying to experiment with liquid fuel. Aubert and von Braun were among the prominent VFR group, who made their own rockets and launched them periodically. As Hitler's regime rose, however, the potential for government funding was impossible if it was not to help the Nazi cause. This would cause many members, such as von Braun, to join their ranks to continue receiving funding. As it turns out, these enthusiasts would soon become far more important to the Nazis. Using concepts they had learned, including those from Gonard, von Braun created the V-2 rocket. While his interest was still in space, the rockets were obviously not used for that and resulted in the deaths of thousands. As the war came to a close, the Soviets and the Americans had great interest in the German rocket program. With this, they scrambled to recruit leading scientists, with von Braun going to the Americans, he would help them develop concepts and technologies over the following years. But without the drive of war funding, this didn't allow many concepts to become practical. This included concepts like traveling to Mars, artificial gravity stations, and a space station capable of orbit-to-ground missiles in the name of national security. The Soviets were not completely in the dark on rockets either, though. One of the most knowledgeable was Sergei Korolev. Younger than the others on this list, his inspirations lied in the growing culture of airplanes and gliders. As he studied these, he soon imagined the capabilities of a rocket-powered airplane. 
He studied further and developed flight stabilization methods before being sent to the Gulag, likely being framed by a potentially jealous co-worker. He was later sent to a labor camp for other scientists to work on the Soviet projects. Here he showed his potential in rocketry, leading to his eventual release. So again, with World War II ending, the Soviets found V-2 rocket plans and this spawned a new area of discovery. Improving the concepts, Korolev, who joined the communists to request more funding, created the world's first ICBM, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. This was able to carry a nuke over 4,000 miles. As his work was implemented for war by the Soviets, he still found himself geared towards space travel. He convinced Stalin to allow him to attach a small satellite to one of the R-7 rockets used for ICBM tests, which would be Sputnik, the catalyst for the start of the space race. It's here where we see the most substantial advancements in space travel, culminating in the greatest competition the world has ever seen. The origins of this race wasn't simply born from immediate political rivalries, but from decades of inspiration. Born from the works of Verne, the Tess of Gonard, scientists with not simply alliances, but also caught up in the greater events of their time. This video was inspired by a lecture which was featured in the video service, The Great Courses Plus. 1969 Walking on the Moon, taught by Professor Vejas Gabriel Leilovicius. Here he detailed the history and journey of getting to the moon. You can access this and many numerous courses through The Great Courses Plus. It's a subscription on-demand video learning service with over 7,000 video lectures taught by professors in basically every field. Topics like science, history, math, and even really specific and odd topics that continue to always be updated, like photography. Courses are sometimes even hosted by National Geographic and the Smithsonian. It removes the pressure of grades while also giving you college grade lectures. Just watch and listen. So, if you want to learn more about the space race, click on this link to get one month of unlimited access to courses and videos absolutely free. Just visit thegreatcoursesplus.com slash knowledge. The link is provided in the description below. This is Cody of Knowledge Hub.